explain is actually a harassing Christianity called modalism, i.e. at one particular time they are not one mode. At the same time, they are all three modes. So the example of ice, water and steam okay. does not equate the Trinity. So, so God the Father, yeah. the Creator, cannot die. His Son Jesus, who He sent to earth, did die, but rose again and lived, sits at the right hand of God. Okay. So one is mortal and the other is immortal. Do you agree? Jesus is immortal. But no, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. Do you know what immortal means? Forever. No, that's eternal. Okay. This is a this is a categorical mistake when people okay. who speak English even, and I'm not I'm not being no, condescending no, to you, right. because the two words in right. English, immortal and, and eternal, eternal, have two different immortal meanings. Immortal meaning not die. Absolutely. Right. Did Jesus right. die? He did die. There you go. So you cannot call him immortal. Am I right? Okay. Yes. What does God say in First Timothy then 6, what did, 16? But then what what did, what did what did God do? With you? We're coming. We're, we're coming. We're coming. There. Don't worry. What did God say? Or what did what does the Bible say in First Timothy 6:16? 6, that He alone is immortal, who lives in unapproachable light, who no man hath seen or can see. Okay. When God says that He alone is immortal, can anyone then claim that He's mortal? I'll, I'll okay. Repeat. If, if God claims that He alone is immortal. Can somebody else then negate that and say, no, God is mortal? If he says immortal, which means not dying, can anyone say he can die? I can't explain that. I don't know. It's very simple. Look, yeah. if you and I can die, yes. we are called mortal. Mortal, yes. Yes, which means to die. Sorry, That's right. ability Jesus, to die. Jesus came, took the form of a man to, to walk on his earth. He was immaculate. He was born of a virgin. We believe that with Mary. Uh, how we, that happens, I, I can't explain. No, no, we, as Muslims, know. we believe that. You know, okay, okay. I'm a Muslim, and okay. most of the brothers here are okay. Muslims. So, as Muslims, we believe he's one of the mightiest messengers. He's a prophet of God. He's a Messiah. Yes, and he's born of the Virgin Mary. And he will come here. Yeah, we believe in the second coming. So, as Muslims and Christians, we have this in common. Okay. The Jews obviously negate him, even as a prophet, a messenger, or a Messiah. Yes, they, they, and his second coming, they, they negate that. But as Christians and Muslims, we have this common. The difference between the three faiths is, is Jesus, very much what, so, because one that, that completely reject him. That is the question. What do you do with Jesus? Yeah, that's what I'm, I'm telling you. As far as the Jews are concerned, they completely reject him. Yes, as as a prophet, a messenger. Not all Jews, but some, I mean, Well, I'm talking about the mainstream yeah. Jews. Yes. So Judaism as a religion, they reject him as a prophet, messenger, Messiah altogether. The Christians take the Christians take the other extreme. They raise him to the standard of God, to the level of God. Yes. Yes, they call him God himself, even though Jesus never claimed to be God. Are you aware of that? Uh, he always said, I will sit by my father. Yeah, but that doesn't mean it's God. That's right. That's what I'm saying. He will sit by his father. If you sit next to your dad, you're not your dad. And, and, and he also said, you believe in God, believe also in me. Yeah, that's right. If you don't believe in the prophets, Sorry, if you believe in the prophets, then obviously you'll believe in God as well. Because he, he one of the said, one of the things the in Iman, as Muslim, we believe part of the Iman, part of the faith, is to believe in the prophets of God. If you do not believe them, for example, if any Muslim claims that Jesus is not a prophet or a messenger of God, he is not he is not amongst the people who are called Muslims. Yes? Because this is a fundamental part of our belief, to acknowledge the true prophets and messengers as messengers and prophets from God. So now going back to the question about immortality of Jesus, sorry, mortality of Jesus and immortality of the Father. Okay. By the way, do you know that Jesus addresses his Father as not just the Father, but also as God? Yes. Do you believe Jesus as a God? When he is on earth, yes he believes. Oh, what do you mean as on earth? Was he not fully God on earth? He took the form, he was without sin. No, the question is not whether he was in sin or not. The question is when he was on earth during his ministry, would you say he was was just a man? I appreciate your questions because you're making me think. Which is good, which is idea. Yeah. 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 No, that's good. And I so, appreciate you not yelling. So. No, so, uh, we, 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 that's why we're here. Yeah, yeah we, we like to take it from a logical perspective because the thing is, God says that he's not the author of confusion. Yes? So, when God says to you that he's immortal... Although this doesn't kind of babble. Welcome to the biggest corner. Is it the first time here? Yes. What's your name? I, I, I'm just visiting. I'm Mike. I'm Hashim. Nice meeting you, Mike. Hashim. Hashim. Yes. Are you from the States? Yes. Which, uh, which part? Texas. Uh, Texas. Ooh. Yeah, <laughs> be careful. George Bush town. Yeah, that's good. Right outside of our town. His ranch is very near to yeah. yeah. Right, so, yeah, where we... Yeah, we've been talking about when God says something, for example, when, when God asserts that He is immortal, when God says that He is all-knowing, when God says He's all 
powerful, then we mortals should not go against those things. Because obviously you and I cannot know God fully. We can only go by... Even Moses had to turn his back when he passed by. We cannot know God fully with our limited minds. That is, that is something that is obvious. However, God has revealed certain things about him, which we do know. So we are not speculating here. So when God says he's immortal, he mentions this in the scripture. It's in the Quran and it's in the Bible as well. When God says he's all-knowing, then it is in the scripture, in the Quran and in the Bible as well. When God says he's all-powerful, even that is in the scripture. So we are not speculating about this attributes of characteristics of God. This is something that we know from him because he's revealed this to us. So now with regards to Jesus, would you say Jesus died? Yes. And obviously you believe he rose again? Yes. Yes. As far as Muslims are concerned, we do not believe this myth. So this is one of the differences between Christians and... So we don't believe he was crucified or he died. We believe that Allah or God raised him to himself alive and he will come back one day in the second coming Muhammad. no no Jesus Jesus will come and Jesus will come as, as from the Ummah from the, uh, from the uh, basically he has to follow what Muhammad uh, uh, the Sharia is because in the uh, yeah the Prophet said even if Musa came today he will have no choice but to follow my Sharia my way isn't it it's a hadith it's a Sahih hadith so anyway I'm, I'm digressing so with regards to Jesus as character look Jesus at no point claimed that he was God. Yes, he said he's the way to God. And the way, the truth and life. You know, we Muslims, we say amen to that. We have no issue with that because we know that all the prophets, they were the way to God. And if you believe in that way, that is the truth from God. And if you believe that truth, then you will have eternal life. So the way, the truth and the life. The way, the truth and life. And the life is eternal life, which means you have attained salvation. Now, if Jesus himself never claimed to be God, and he himself worshipped God, should you and I not be worshipping the same God that Jesus worshipped? Absolutely. Yes? So when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, you know what he did? He fell on his face and he prayed to God. And he said, take this away from me. Is there another way? Yeah. I don't like this way. Yeah. Let it be your will be done, not my will. Yeah. And that's what we pray as Christians. Yeah. Uh, are there any other Christians here? Uh, not any, right now, but there are. Uh, <laughs> I, I feel small. <laughs> <you> know, <laughs> I feel small. Yeah. No, there are some over there as well. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're not in Texas. <laughs> yeah, <I don't. laughs> okay. not, not all the thing is, Texas are Christians. It's, it's, it's a bit late now, but normally there are lots of Christians and Muslims around. So, yeah, we, we have lots of Christians and speakers. So, yeah, what I'm saying is that when Jesus prayed in the Garden of God, what was he praying? He said, Take this cup away from me. And it will be all will be done. So when he says, Take this cup away from me with your will, what he's saying is that to save me from the crucifixion because he knew the crucifixion is something that is a terrible torture. Yeah. So he was in deep agony. He was literally sweating blood. And he was on his knees. And then he went on his on his face, on the ground, begging God, pleading with God to, take, to save him from that crucifixion. This is the way we pray with God yeah. in our life. So you remember I told you as Muslims we do not believe that he died or that he was crucified? But Christians believe this. Now, from your perspective, do you believe Jesus, this prayer of Jesus, this pleading of Jesus, were accepted or rejected? That's a, yeah. hey, since you're asking as a point blank, I guess you'd say that prayer was rejected. But, but Jesus didn't because at the very end of that prayer, he said, Father, it's not my will, but your will. Absolutely. Put his cup from me. He knew what it is. How, how Christ came and knew, I, I can't even begin to imagine what that would be like. By the way, Christ's brother was one of the, James, not believe, James did not believe him early, but later became the leader of the church in Jerusalem. But he, he, he was not one of the early believers, because he, he saw him as a brother. He was his half brother, wasn't he? Yeah. Because, because so, God was, so what I'm saying is that so, with, with Jesus' is prayer. So, so let me say. Yeah, go on. Jesus knew what his purpose was when he came to earth. So why is he trying to bail out? Be because he was he took a human form. But he was fully God as well. That's right. But he said, he was thinking, Father God, is there any other way? And basically God said, no. So you are the only one. Which means his prayer was rejected. But, but, but no, because he prayed, not my, my will, not Father, don't you? No, but that's a given. And in, in my life, there are things uh, as Christians 
But Mike, that is a given, that is a given isn't it? When you pray to God, don't you think it is with His will, not your will anyway? I've got, when anyone prays to God, they know so that it is always going to be with you, As a human, yeah. so many times I pray, I'm a fallible man, I'm a sinner. Once I accepted Christ, I didn't, ch I changed, but, but I still fight, I still struggle. I can't tell you I've never sinned since accepting Christ in my life. But, but every day, every moment, all the time I have to yield to Him. And sometimes I'll be more interested in my job or my family or World Cup, whatever. And I've got World to, Cup? I've got to you follow football? No, I, I, I follow American football. <laughs> yeah, I thought so. Yeah, but I was trying to get okay. something there. So, so I've got to keep saying, God, I've because of my desires, I've put you on the background. I've got to submit mine. So many times we try to, uh, the expression we would use is twist, twist God's arm. You know, try no, no, but, we try to get God to do what we want. But Mike, I think, I think you misunderstood the question. Okay. Look, even if you think that you're praying for your own benefit, for your own, if I, if I may call it selfishness, yes? For your yes. own thing, regardless of what you desire, it is still going to be with God's will, is it not? You see, what I, you see the point I'm trying to make? Look, it's, so not whether, a, it's not a simple question. No, no, whether you say that it is with your will or my will, the point is, it is always going to be with His will, because He is the Almighty. So whether, whether you, you, an example, whether you like or not... Let me give you an Old Testament yeah, example. Yeah, go on. I don't know that this fits. I, the only thing popped in my mind. Okay. When, uh, when the people of Israel, they had judges. Oh, yes. All the other countries had kings. And what did they want? They wanted a king. They didn't want to judge. They didn't want to judge. They want to be like. They want to be like everybody else. They wanted a king. So the first king was Saul. Saul had a lot of problems. We know David. Uh, David was loyal to the king, but because of, uh, if you believe the story of David and Goliath, the, the large Philistine, that uh, they became very popular, and Saul got jealous. So. God looked at the people and said, this is not the best for you, but since you're praying it, since, you know, sometimes uh, I think God will, I struggle with this, because sometimes we say God has a perfect will. This is his most perfect thing for us, but then he has a permissive will. He'll allow us to do certain things, and then, then we have completely out of God's will. When, Are you talking about free will? Free will, yeah. But we are not talking about free will. We're talking about a prayer. But, you see, the prayer, you pray to God, I pray to God, Jesus prays to God. Regardless of whether what we desire or not, the thing is, ultimately, the prayer is going to be answered by whom? It would, by it God. would be an example like this. I'm, I'm, I'm today separated from my family. There's all the states. I'm here. So I would pray, God, watch over my family. You know what? Even if I don't pray that, God is watching over me. No, but that's not the point I'm making. But, but my so, point is, so I don't Jesus, look, whether Jesus said with your will or my will, the point is, it is always God who's going to be either accepting or rejecting the prayer. What was his main prayer? For example, if a mother, sorry, if, if a woman who doesn't have children, she prays to God to bless no her child. with a child, yeah? And, and no child comes. And, and, and she does not say these words, let it be your will, God, or my will. Still going to be God's will. Exactly. That is the point I'm trying to make. So whether Jesus said this or not is irrelevant. The point is this. What was his prayer? To save him from the crucifixion. Was he saved from the crucifixion in the Christian version? In the Christian version, in the biblical what, what, version, what was Jesus saved from the crucifixion? Because that was his prayer, isn't it? It, it was. It, it was his prayer, but, but he, he also said... Uh, he also said with your but, but also, when... Uh, I'm trying to think... It's, it's very simple. Look, his what, prayer what, wasn't what, accepted. Was it Daniel or Job that prayed, God, do this. But even if my God doesn't, he is still God. I, don't I, I could pray. No, but we are not denying I, that. I, I, I could pray right here. I could say, God, to, to show these people that you are God, have lightning strike that tree. But it is, but, 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 that, contain God, but then God ultimately God. it is up to God to accept that prayer or not. And that is exactly what happened with Jesus. The point is, if anyone who looks at this objectively, you have to come to the conclusion that his prayer, which was to save him from the crucifixion, was rejected. Because ultimately, from the Christian uh, perspective, he was crucified by the Romans. Yes? Okay, let, me, let, me, let me say something. Yeah. This is the hard, to me, the hard thing because. I know it is as, not, as, not a, easy. as a Christian thing, what, what the paramount, the main, the principal thing is regarding Christ, because you can sit here and try to make academic sense, and to me, none of it, I'm an educated man to some degree, he does not, first of all, why would he, God even care? 
Why would he about about people? We were no, no, of course. Look, you cannot say why would God care because God is our creator. Obviously, he cares about we us. Him. We turn over and over and over. Hold on. We, it's so, not so everyone. Exactly. There are people who do but reject, and is, there are people who accept it. This is the hard thing because I can't explain faith. I can sit here and say I have faith that this tree is going to fall over. Faith in what? The process. It's not by our works. It's not by good works. We need to do good works. That's not, that's not good enough. It says it is by faith through God's grace because he died for us. We believe he died for us on the cross, spilt his blood as a sacrifice of the, even the Old Testament. There's no remission of sin without the spilling of blood. That was Christ's blood on the cross. But, but he says it is by faith. So but it's but not, isn't, it's not, isn't it's not, faith with it's, it's not an algebra equation. Didn't his brother, our brother James, say that without works, faith is dead? So that is the way you, you show your faith. No, the thing but is, not, you're not saved by works. No, but you cannot just sit down here and say I have faith and you expect God to basically send you to paradise. Right. You need to work for it. Because, because you see, everything, everything that you do, your actions, is what you will be held accountable exactly. for. It is not, not just your thought or the way that you have faith in God. Of course, you need sure. to have faith in God. But the thing is, that faith can only manifest in the works you do. And, and, that, and, that, and that is when Jesus said, uh, as love, a new commandment I give you, that you love everyone as I have loved you. In, in other words, it says that you should love everyone. Uh, several times he talks about love more than he does. Eternal. So if, if I love you, if I love you, if I love people, I will do certain things to aid and assist and help. No, but I it wasn't just... In. I will show hospitality. Look, there's nothing wrong in but, loving. But, that, but the thing is, what well, do you well, think... We use the word love. Yeah. What, do you think Jesus, what do you think Jesus will do in his second coming? Do you think he's going to love his enemies? Oh, he tells us he's not. Absolutely. He, he so says, it's not just love he preached. He also said who are going to be his enemies and how he's going to deal with them in the second coming. That's right. Yes? Yeah. And his ministry, if you look at the Bible, if you're going to go by love and you're going to only see three years of his ministry, that is not all we know about Jesus, is it? That, that's that's the recorded portion. We know about he, what he, he did he in the Old Testament. He had 30 years that is unrecorded. And he had his disciples for, for, for three, three years. But that's what I'm saying. What you know about Jesus' life in terms of him loving his enemies or him loving whoever it is, is the three years of his life when he and his disciples were very weak in comparison to the Roman Empire. Yes? Well, so obviously you wouldn't, good, so. you, you wouldn't expect Jesus to preach to his uh, disciples, to go and fight them, your enemies, uh, those who oppress you, those who kill you, go and fight them back. You wouldn't expect Jesus to do this because that wouldn't be wise of him. However, wise. when Jesus comes back with his might and his sword, remember Jesus said, I've not come to bring peace but to bring the sword. But because. And this is this is confusing also to people. This is what people they say. You say God is the God of love. Jesus is love. How could He condemn anyone to eternal hell? He is love, but He's also just. Absolutely, and which is what and I'm saying. Just. So that's what I'm saying. That's, so now, I don't, but I don't like justice. Why? But, because I'm a sinner. No, but anyone. Look, you don't need to but, be. But because you don't I need to be sinless to identify, acknowledge our, justice. Our justification right. class looks at me. And I am justified, justified by His blood. That doesn't make me Mike, perfect, Mike, but it gives me some Even if you are a sinner, even if you are someone who is sinless, right. you will identify that justice is something that we should all abide by. You don't need to be sinless to identify this. For example, I, if I ask you, are you a law-abiding citizen? I have broke the law before. No, but most, mostly you are, right? Yeah. You don't need to be sinless. Go too fast. Uh, I know. I know what you mean. Yeah. What I'm saying is, generally speaking, you abide by the law. Yes. Yes. You don't need to be sinless to acknowledge that, do you? Do what now? You don't need to be sinless to acknowledge the law. Not to acknowledge Absolutely. The law. So you see, just can't be sinless. Just no, no. I'm not saying yeah. you are or I am. Yeah. What I'm saying is that in order to acknowledge that you need justice in this world, you don't even need to be. Is going to come no, no. You don't even need to be religious. Yeah. There are many atheists who will identify right. with this. That justice is something that we should all in one acknowledge of the, one, and one, take One of the problems in America, yeah. maybe here too, is that people that say we're Christian, but they don't live that way. They don't live different than the world. And so people that are non-Christian sees and says, I'm as good as, I, I, I live a more just life 
and that person that says, I don't need to be a Christian, because that, that's what it's about. And so we as Christians have not done a good job. We have failed in living the way for educational purposes. Yes, it is. So, so, okay. so the people here, they record it and they upload it on YouTube. Yeah. And from that we get uh, people who, who learn from this conversation and some who, who comment in the comment section. Okay. And it becomes another Dialogue. Source, okay. Yes. Okay. Well, I, didn't, I was surprised. Yeah. I know they were expecting something. So to this has been like a, well, not a new phenomenon. Maybe four, or five years. People have started recording, and now uh, many people who cannot attend Speakers Corner have started to come to Speakers Corner, or have, at least have um, become uh, the, the knowledge of yeah, the knowledge of especially well, religion. One, one thing I'm gonna have to go. Yeah, I've got to right. go back to the university. But so one, one thing I will yeah, tell you, so I appreciate the dialogue, I appreciate yeah. the civil manner that everybody has. I appreciate no, I mean, I think, I, some I thank you for your really, time. Some, some others are really yelling and yelling and yelling. It's very, nobody's hearing each other. But, you, but, but you also, find a as, a, as a student, you are very well researched. And we differ on who Jesus is. We, we, because you know, we as Muslims, God. we believe in Jesus. Like I told you earlier, if we reject Jesus as a prophet, a messenger, a messiah, then I wouldn't be a Muslim. So, as far as the Christians are concerned, we have a lot of commonality with regards to Jesus. The only thing that we uh, dispute is one, his crucifixion and death, uh, and the other thing is whether he's a deity or not. So, as Muslims, we believe he's one of the mightiest messengers. We do not say that he's at the level of God. Because if you look at the, the Abrahamic faiths, Christianity, Judaism, Islam, yes, Islam and Judaism both believe that God is one, not a triune God. Okay? I think the only odd ones out are the Christians. Now, if I were to ask you, do you think anyone in the Bible, either in the Old Testament or the New Testament, ever advocated a triune God? Have they ever advocated that God is a trinity or a triune God, i.e. the Father, Son, Holy Spirit? Throughout the Old Testament, they knew a Messiah was needed and would come. And we believe that Jesus is the Messiah. But did they expect to worship the Messiah? Or would they, would they expect him to be a man who will bring peace? Well, even the disciples, the, the, the twelve, or 11, however you want to count, misunderstood Jesus' role because they thought he was going to come as a political God, uh, political uh, with force. And they were probably very disappointed. They, well, we know they were disappointed in the garden. Oh, the they, they scattered. They, they left. Oh, you mean uh, when he was going to be crucified? Yes. Yeah, I, I'm I mean, aware they, of that. They're like, oh, wow. Yeah, we the fought this man for three years. Years. We, We've wasted three years of our life. And then, but then when he appeared to them, after his resurrection, it's like, wow. And even Peter on the beach when he saw Christ, Peter uh, always so bold, always so bold. Uh, the one that would shout out, oh, I'll never, I'll never do this. Or he, it always asked the question, you know, he was good. But can you imagine when Jesus appeared, he felt pretty bad. Well, no, that's but, because but, Jesus prophesied but that, Jesus called that, him in and that before, him the uh, before the he said, you'll deny me. cross or something, you'll deny me three times or something. He said, oh, no, not me. Absolutely. But he did. Yeah. But, but you, did, you know, my question wasn't about whether Jesus was a Messiah. My question was rega with regards to belief in a triune God. The, the, did any prophet or messenger or disciple or apostle or even Jesus Christ himself ever preach a triune God, not, not the concept of a trinity. Did they ever preach this not, anywhere not in the where, Bible? I, I, I can't think of a time. Okay. But, so what does that tell us? If nowhere in the Bible anyone preached the trinity, why do the Christians believe in the trinity, which actually was established in the fourth century, because, in, the because, because, of, in the Council of Nicaea, in the Council of Constantinople, which is the year 381? More than 350 years after Jesus, they established this doctrine of the trinity. Why do you think the central doctrine of Christianity was never taught by any of the disciples or by any of their early apostolic fathers it was. or by Jesus. It was. Really? Why did Jesus ever preach the Trinity? He did. And I don't mean the word Trinity, I mean the concept of it. Right. Because I know the word is not there. Did anyone in the Bible ever preach the concept of Trinity? I believe so. Well, well I, I would, you don't, I would, don't have to give me the exact okay. words, but just paraphrase it for me. But I, would, I would say Jesus talked about it because he talked about my father's house. He even when he said, when he was trying to prepare the disciples for his passion that was coming, he said, it, you know, he said where, where are you going? We want to go with you. And the disciples said, he said, where I'm going, you can't go. But where I'm going, uh, in many rooms, I'll prepare a place for you. I'll be with the Father. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. 
So he, he, he did this. And then he also told them to stay together until the Spirit came upon them. So, so Christ preached the Trinity. So how does that uh, equate to the Trinity? Because what you have mentioned so far, and I don't deny this, there are references in the Bible where it talks about the three persons of the Trinity. But you see, the Trinity doesn't mean three. The Trinity means tri-unity. Is all these three are one being. So, so any any Christian who says to me, yes, the Father is mentioned in the Bible, Jesus mentioned in the Bible, the Holy Spirit is mentioned in the Bible, I have no problem with that. Well, yes, I, they are, they I are the mentioned Holy in the Bible. A lot better than the Holy Ghost. When I, was little, I, Holy Ghost I, I prefer the word Holy Spirit as well. Yeah, this ghost sounds a bit spooky. To me. It does to me too. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So what I'm saying is this: the Trinity doesn't mean three. It means the three are united as one. Now you three, show me. Three in one. Yeah. So where is this three in one? Because Jesus said, "My Father is greater than I." Yes. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 8, 6 that the one true God is the Father. Jesus in, um, <laughs> this is the same John, yeah, John 17, 3, he says, but there is but one true God and he's addressing the Father. So both Paul and Jesus, both of them have asserted that the only true God is the Father. You know, many Christians say, God the Father, God the Holy Spirit, God the Son. I don't know if you're aware of this, but the only true phrase that you find in the Bible is God the Father. You will never find this phrase called God the Son or God the Holy Spirit because this is a later, what do you say, a later postulation? I hate to cut you off. No, fair enough. I've enjoyed, no, fair enough. I've enjoyed the conversation. It will drive me, it will uh, inspire me to, to study the Word of God, what we call the Bible, uh, more. It, it gives me calls. I have not read the Quran. Would you like it, to? It tells me that I maybe should. If I give you a copy, no, would you like to? No, no, because I, I don't know. I'm, I've got to run Come on. sources, you know. <laughs> So, it's a free copy. So, I'll tell him get but, but, yeah, yeah. but that's but, fine. If he doesn't want, we can't force it. Uh, you see, we, we read the Bible. Yeah. And I, in fact, my faith encourages me, encourages us to look into other, in, in, into the uh, into the, uh, uh, the creation of God, and also and also for us to go and learn things. So the Prophet and Allah, his own companions, they were actually going and learning languages like Hebrew in order to understand the previous scriptures. Take our pictures. <laughs> You'll be on video anyway. Yeah, Shall we give you, you the link? Yeah, Go on, Mike and me. Yeah. Asal, is that? Hashim. Hashim. This is not true. This is not true. Yeah? Alhamdulillah. Thank you very much. Oh, okay. Yeah, that looks lovely. Thank I'm you, Mike. Too, too <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And I, I will say this. I know you guys will pray for me that I will see the light. Likewise, I will pray for you that God will reveal himself let us, to all of us. Let us both pray to the God of Abraham. Yeah, absolutely. Is that fair? There you go. Thank you very much. You take care,